Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. <laughs> God is good. All the time. Amen, brother. <laughs> oh, lift your hands to heaven and pray in the Holy Ghost. And Father, we ask for fresh revelation. Fresh revelation that we may keep the restraints on of our flesh and not be led by demonic voices, but be led by your spirit in Jesus' name. Would you turn to Romans 8? Romans 8, pull out your swords. Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Are you blessed and highly flavored today? Are you highly salted? Amen. Yes. <laughs> In his presence is fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen? Amen. Romans 8, we'll start at verse 1. Let's speak it, because what you speak is what you eat, what you eat is what you become. Amen. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh. It's amazing how many people still don't get this. Amen. Well, you've been a Christian for 25 years. Praise God. Are you still living in fornication? Are you still lying? Are you still cheating? Are you still promoting those things that God's displeased in? Then you're living according to the flesh, and you're going to hell. It's real simple. Amen. But, but, but. There ain't no but ministry. Amen? This is simple. And it's time that the body of Christ woke up and came out of their selfish arena, out of the soulish arena, and started walking in the spirit. Because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to stand before God and he's going to say, I'm sorry, I can't let you in. Because there's a sign that says justice and righteousness in the front of my throne. But Lord, I did this, I did that. Yes, but you practice lawlessness. I can't allow you in. There's going to be a lot of people that thought that because they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that they're getting home. It's not always how you begin, it's how you end. Amen. Amen? So he says here, look, at there's no condemnation to those who are walking according to the Spirit, but those who are walking according to the flesh, even though they proclaim to be Christians and they're serving the flesh, they won't make it home. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And how do you maintain this? How do you qualify? By walking in the spirit. For what the law could not do in that we, it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, every said, everyone say requirement. That means there's a part of cooperation. Cooperation. What does grace mean? God's plan. It's not God's unmerited favor. That is not doctrine. It's God's plan. Plan to what? Get you to escape. Amen? You earn God's favor. Let's go a little further. That the, verse 4, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So the requirement is to what? Walk according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the natural mind, the carnal mind, the mind that you were born with, to, to be carnally minded is what? Death. Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
because your natural mind that you were born with, called the carnal mind, is against God. That's what means enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. It can never change. The carnal mind cannot change. It will never change. It will always be against God. That's why you need a new mind. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Wow. So we see that the law of the Spirit is to be led in freedom by the Spirit. Amen? Amen. The first thing we want to do is be free from ourself. Amen. Your old man. Your flesh. The first thing, the first level, there's three levels of freedom. Remember, we want to reach the master's level. Amen? Amen? There's the master's level that we want to reach. It's the third level. And we're going to talk about the third level today. But there's multiple levels. There's three levels we have to reach. The first thing we've got to do, the first level to complete is to be free from self. And the only way you can do that is to be bound to Christ. Does everybody understand that? This is where to be free from self is to be bound to Christ. Now, Christ is the anointed one in his anointing. So that means you are bound, you are yoked with the anointing that breaks of a yoke of bondage. You are yoked with the anointing. That's why Jesus said, come, yoke yourself with me. Amen? Amen. Yoke yourself with me. And the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. So the first level that you and I must accomplish is to be free from self. If you're not free from yourself, you can't be free from anything else. Amen. And it is to be bound to the anointing to Christ. Is everybody okay? Amen. How many of y'all want to reach the third level? Amen. Praise God. How many of y'all going through stuff? Amen. Praise God. If you say no, you're a liar. <laughs> I mean, it's real simple. Everybody goes through stuff. The whole thing is going through it. We want to get through it. We want to, don't want to get stuck there. And so one of the things that begins to happen is, when, well, listen, when you get true revelation from God, it's like being born again. Whew. It's like an opening into the eternal realm that you have tasted, touched, and you changed. It's like, whoa. When it's true revelation from God, you become humble, not prideful. When it's true revelation from God, it's a, another area where you love him more. And you you're willing to deny yourself. When that true revelation comes from God, it's like, man, there is nothing else that's fulfilling. And when that veil opens and you step into another revelation and you change. In Galatians 4, everybody there? <laughs> Glory. Whew, are, you, are you joyful today? Amen. Snapping right. Did you get touched by the Lord this morning? Yeah. Well, you know why you got touched? Because you touched him. When you touch his heart, he touches yours. Galatians 4, verse 1. Now I say that the what? Heir. Are you an heir? Amen. Amen. As long as he is a child does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Bondage and elements of the world. In other words, all kinds of laws, regulations, religious events. Does everybody understand all kinds of religious things? It's, in other words, bound by works. People think that they're getting into heaven by their work. It doesn't work that way. You get to heaven by relationship. That's why, what did Jesus say? I don't know you. And they said, well, we know you. Well, he said, I don't know you. A lot of people heard about Jesus. In fact, they've used all of his promises. But he's going to say, I don't know you. Why? Because you practice lawlessness. I stay away. I turn my face away and I turn my back. 
on sin, transgressions, and iniquities until there is true repentance. That's why Jesus manifested the blood of Christ because God doesn't look at anyone in sin. Only through the blood can he see you. Does everybody get it? He looks through the eyes of the blood of Christ. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In verse 3. Even so, when we were children, we were in the bondage under the elements of the world, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, <clears throat> to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So it was no longer about law abiding according to the law. It was about the law was being removed so that you and I could have a relationship. Amen? Amen. In verse 7, Therefore you are no longer a slave but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now after you've known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be what? In bondage. In other words, once they were freed by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, all of a sudden they started to get more involved in works to set them free instead of relationship. <clears throat> What does he say here? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I'm afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. <laughs> Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. In other words, bondage under the elements of the world. You know, many religious laws and regulations and all kinds of things that the enemy tries to bring us bondage in where people are not free. People started to be free, and then they fall back into works. Amen? Amen? They're not free in the Spirit or led by the Spirit. Many have the Spirit, even gifts, but are still in bondage. They haven't reached the third level. Some of them haven't even reached the second level. Remember, Jesus expressed that he was the way, the truth, and the life. <clears throat> Excuse me. He was the way to freedom. He was the truth of all freedom. And in that other chamber called the third chamber, there is life. And in that life is where the spirit of the Lord is. There is life, liberty, freedom. Galatians 5. Verse 7. Third level of freedom. Of course, for every level you get a freedom, there's another larger devil yes. you got to deal with. But that's okay. He's in you is greater than he is in the world. You have power and authority to remove everything. <clears throat> in verse 7, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens a whole lump. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, in other words, no other thoughts. <clears throat> but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to freedom or liberty, only do not use this freedom or liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. By, but, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become, become consumed by one another. I say then what? Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish or desire that are not being led by the spirit. But if you are led by the spirit of God, you are not under the law. 
You are not under the what? The law. The law. It's, it's powerful here because in this we see that, you know, when the word speaks about leaven, leaven in, in the word of God is doctrine of demons. It's doctrines. It's false doctrine. That's why he says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. He says walk in the spirit, be led by the spirit. In other words, in your relationship and cooperation, submitting to the knowledge of the mind of Christ. In your relationship and cooperation with God, you are submitting to the knowledge of the mind of Christ. In other words, you are submitting to the knowledge of God's thoughts, not your own anymore. You are comparing what God sees according to what you see. In other words, they started well, but they slid back from following. They went to working of the law and not following of the spirit. In Romans 12. Romans 12. So one of the things that we've got to maintain all the time is the mind of Christ. So we must refresh ourselves all the time. You know, it's amazing how many people do not read their word. The Word of God is written, recording, voice of the Spirit of God. This is how you get the mind of Christ. Amen? <clears throat> Starting at verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your re reasonable service or your responsibility. In other words, you're to present your spirit, soul, body, flesh, will, desires, and possessions to the Lord every day. Lord, those are yours. Why? Because there's something powerful. He loves to make the exchange with you. He says, if you're my heir, then you, everything I own is yours. So everything that I own is his. Everything he owns is mine. Not that the world believes that especially the police officer if you go into somebody's parking lot. You know, tell me, look, okay, my father owns this place. But anyways, there are certain laws that you have to abide by. Amen? Amen. But again, this is all being led by the Spirit of God. This, the more you're led, the more you're free. And God will test you on certain things to see where you are so that he can remove those things, or actually he gives you the authority and ability to remove them yourself. <clears throat> Verse 2, and do not be what? Don't be what? Conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your thoughts. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So in this, we want to maintain the thoughts of God or maintaining the mind of Christ by renewing and refreshing all the time. That way we know his thoughts, his purposes, and leading. But I want you to know that the enemy will resist you in every area. He does not want you to advance in your levels of freedom. In fact, he wants you to go back because if he can put you back in bondage, he uses you as a puppet. Once he loses control of you, he doesn't like that. In fact, there are people who hate losing control themselves. People that do not, who can't handle losing control, are controlled. <clears throat> and they don't know it. They may speak in tongues and all kinds of stuff. But if, listen, if you can't trust God and lose your control, then you're controlled. Because that's nothing but fear. Amen? Amen. <laughs> People of control are not free from sin. I mean, from fear. I'm sorry. But in fear, they live in fear. How many of you know insecurity is fear? Anxiousness is fear. Anxiety is fear. All of those things are promoters of fear or associated and connected to fear. Remember, the first thing is to free ourselves. Be, to be free is to be free from you. 
That's the first part of freedom. The second level of freedom is to be free from worldly influence. It doesn't mean that it won't come to you, but you have dominion over it. Do you know that 50% of the world is under regime government oppression? That's a lot. Do you know that 80% of the mankind is under oppression? That means only 20% are walking free. People are oppressed. They're oppressed by the enemy. They're bound by drugs and alcohol. They're bound by fear. They're bound by lust. They're bound by themselves. People. People are oppressed by governments, politicians, political agendas, false religions and doctrines of demons. People are oppressed. Remember, Jesus was sent... And the word says that the anointing was on him to break loose and to heal all those who were oppressed by the powers of darkness, the devil. But see, for some people, that's still not a reality. They only live by what they see, what they feel, what they taste, and what they smell. They're not living according to what they don't see. Amen. Hosea 5. Hosea 5. <clears throat> In verse 10. Hosea 5, verse 10. Let's speak it. The princes of Judah are like those who remove a landmark. That's associated with boundaries, borders. Hello. I will pour out my wrath on them like what? Water. How many of y'all know God sets boundaries and borders and so forth? Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment. Why? Because he willingly walked by what? Human precept. Not according to God's ways, but according to man's emotional ways. What happened to them? Oppressed. They were oppressed. Therefore, I'll be to Ephraim like a moth and to the house of Judah like rottenness. In other words, they walk according to human precepts, not Christ, which is the only way to maintain freedom. Again, here's the main problem. They don't recognize these things. It isn't a reality to them. They can't overcome it because if you don't, if it's not a reality to you, you can't overcome. You won't remove something. That's why Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception and his power is fear. He operates in an unseen realm. He wants to stay hidden from you. But he can't be, he's not hidden from the spirit. He's not hidden from God. So if we're led by the spirit, we'll see the way God wants us to see Colossians 2. Hold on. Go to Hosea 4, 6 while we're here. Let's get this done and over with. <clears throat> Hosea 4, 6. It's just one page back. While we're in the town of Hosea, let's go there. Verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 6, let's speak it. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Wow. They're destroyed for making things real. There's not a reality of the unseen realm. Let me tell you, when that begins to be nullified from you, become dull from you, and you fall back into religion... The enemy comes in. What's he going to do? He's going to prevent you from advancing in your freedom. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you rejected knowledge. I also reject you from being a priest for me. That's someone close to the Lord. And because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. That's when the curse comes down. 
Amen? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they have no understanding. Colossians chapter 2. Praise God. Is everybody okay? In verse 8. Speak it together, please. Beware. Hello. Be what? Beware. Beware. Be alert. Be consistent. Be awake. Don't be deceived. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of what? Men. According to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. In him you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through the faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead to your trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made alive together with him, having forgotten your trespasses, having wiped out the handwritten requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having what? Nailed it to the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. So let no one judge you in food or in drink, or in regarding a festival, or in a new moon, or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of what? Christ. And not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Who brings the increase? God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why is though living in the world do you subject yourself to what? Regulations. Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have, a, have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but of our no value against the indulgence of the flesh. This is powerful. In the third level of freedom, there is a place where there is a true, again, reality of relationship with God Almighty. It's not an imagination. It is true. He hears you, and you hear him. You know his heart. You know his will. You know his purpose for you. You know, as leading, not by the works of leading, but we works for, from the leading. Amen? So we know what he wants us to do in works and obedience. Let me give you an example. If you're at a red light, all right, and the light is red. Now, some of us may have a hard time with this. If the Holy Spirit said to you, run this light, most people wouldn't. It depends on your relationship. And if you ran that light and you realized that a building was falling right on you. See, but the individual is so bound by religiosity and laws and regulations, he did not allow the Spirit of God to speak to him stronger than his motions and feelings and the things of the world. And God was just trying to make a wave escape for him or her, but the building came down and that person died. 
Do you know how many people are dead because they missed the leading of the Holy Spirit? Think about this. I'm telling you, there's things that God told me to do that would be law-breaking, not law-hurting, but it saved my life. Saved my life. Because if you're led by the Spirit, we're not under the law. Listen, our Father owns it all. We can't allow the influence of the world to dictate what we're supposed to do. Remember when the disciples came before the magistrates in the Sanhedrin? I mean, Jesus broke all the laws. You understand that? He was an outlaw. Boy, they didn't like he healed on the Sabbath, did they? That was according to the law. Because he was led by the Spirit of God. And this is where the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to a total third level freedom where we are led by the Spirit of God no matter what someone says, no matter what's going on. That we hear and obey. We hear and obey. Amen? Look at this. is happening all over the world. People are dying left and right because they're not hearing what the Spirit is saying. He's always trying to make a way of escape for us. Always. How many times people get in accidents? Gone down the wrong road. Hey, look, you can go down the wrong road and it was from God. Amen. Amen? How many times God wanted to bless you, but it didn't seem right because of that religious stuff? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Because of the traditions of men. Oh, hallelujah. The worldly influence. Luke 13. This is the third level of freedom where we are free from everything and anything. No matter what anyone says, I don't care what the rule or law is. If Holy Spirit says do it, you do it. Luke 13. That is the third level of freedom. That's reaching the third level. Of, and then there's maintaining it. You know, when I was a first believer, and I, I remember people used to say, man, you need to trust God. He'll remove you from your debt. I, I believed it. Amen? How many of y'all know God can remove? I've seen him remove $80,000, all kinds of money, debt. They just disappear. In fact, he did that when I, because when I, I first had a visit, visitation from the Lord and got set free, and my house was in foreclosure. I owed $10,000 on back payments because I was an addict. And the Holy Spirit led me to do something specifically. And the next thing I know, the $10,000 lien debt disappeared. And I got the house back with a cheaper interest rate. Snap. I was months behind on payments. $10,000 lien. But if you're led by the Spirit, nothing is impossible. Heck, I was driving down the road. And my car died. And I've been contemplating, Lord, what do I do? I've heard you can't file for court, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, bankruptcy. And don't file for bankruptcy, just trust God. Okay, Lord, I trust you. What do you want me to do? I hear what I hear, but what do you want me to do? Well, my car dies out. I thought I ran out of gas because my gas gauge didn't work. So I really had to trust God everywhere I was going. It was good training. And sometimes, and he would warn me, and I'd say, okay, I'll make, I'll, I'll, give me one more stop. And he's a guy, you need to stop and get gas. All right, I will. Can you, can, can you just hold on and keep my tank full? <laughs> okay, I should have stopped. <laughs> Training. So my car dies, and I, I thought maybe I ran out of gas. So I go into this 
Cumberland Farms thing. And right there on the, as soon as I walk in there, it's got this little paper and it says, bankruptcy assistance. I'm like, really? He said, grab that. And I did. And I got a little thing of gas. I went out to my car and I started pouring the gas in and I could hear it go into other gas. I think, man, this thing ain't empty. I went in and started the car. He said, I just wanted you to get this paper. I said, okay. I read the paper. 250 bucks or something like this. Bankruptcy. I said, do you want me to file bankruptcy? He said, yes, I want you to go see this man. I went to this attorney, come to find out he was a backslidden believer and so forth. Anyways, I got out of debt. My $30,000 minimum debt. Why? Bankruptcy. Because that's what he told me to do. Now, he might not be telling you to do that, but that's what he told me to do, and I did. Does everybody understand the difference between being free and being a religion? Because the world wants to impose religion on you, and God wants to bless you. Hello. Verse 10. We there? Luke 13, is that what I said? Verse 10. Man, I can stay here all day and tell you all kinds of stuff. What happened. God is good all the time. Verse 10. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could no, in no way raise herself. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. He broke the law. And he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore come and be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. Who is he to tell what day God can heal? Who is he to tell who God can bless? Amen. Does everybody understand that? See, but the enemy will try to prevent your blessings. Oh, and the Lord, what did he do in verse 15? The Lord answered him and said, you hypocrite. Does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his own ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath? <laughs> how can you be so religious? How about how can you be so stupid and still breathe? Jesus broke the law of tradition all the time, healing on the Sabbath. He sat with drug addicts and alcoholics. He sat with prostitutes. Well, and it was against the religious sect then. He was an outlaw to the religious world of bondage, trying to bring them out of fear, slavery, deception, guilt, and shame. But many refused. He said, I've come to set the captives free and completely free, not partially free. But there's a process to it. Amen? First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. There's not a person in the world, I don't believe, that doesn't want to be free. The problem is, is many people think they're free, but they're not. That's the great deception. Verse 18. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. We know whoever is born of God does not what? Sin. Doesn't sin. In other words, he's maintaining a... Uh, born again state of being, rejecting the influence of evil. The only way that you can continue to do this is to maintain the reality that there is evil. Amen. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself. 
And the wicked one does what? Not touch him. What he, he does, he keeps himself alert. He keeps himself alert. Away. We know that we are of God in the world, whole world, not part of the world. The whole world lies under the what? Sway the wicked one, the influence. We know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding. That understanding means reality. That we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols that open the doors. All mankind is under the sway of the influence of evil one. 2 Timothy 1. Second Timothy chapter one verse six. Therefore I remind you to what? Stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hand. Stir it up. Stir yourself up. For God has not given us the spirit of what? Fear. But what? Power. And love and a sound mind. So fear, the enemy uses to nullify a sound mind, the power, and God's love. He likes to breach those things. So he uses fear to bring people under control again. Is everybody okay? Not the spirit of fear, right? There's another fear. We want to remove all the fears of the enemy. But we want to maintain the spirit of reverence, honor, and respect to our God, King, and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is called the fear of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 4. Third level of freedom. And remember the disciples went in front of them and he said, look at man, we're going to preach the Lord, whatever you say. We don't care what you're saying. Well, it's not legal to. <laughs> look at how many countries people go to prison for having a Bible. The oppression. They have underground churches. They still do it. Amen? Just because it's the law doesn't mean that they're not going to do it. They would rather go to prison. They'd rather be persecuted. Verse 7, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. But we have this earth and this treasure and earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed. Anybody hard pressed? Amen. You don't have to raise your hands, you all are. We live in a world that's hard pressed. Yet not crushed. We're hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I what? I spoke. We also believe in therefore speak. In other words, there's confession and there's decree. You are allowing light and life to go before you. So when we decree things, we pray, we speak things for light to go before us and life. Because the word is a light unto our path, right? Hallelujah. In verse 13, uh, I mean, uh, verse uh, 14, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. 
Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are what? Seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. We're hard pressed because we believe and we speak, we decree, we confess. We confess God's promises and covenant. We take authority to remove evil spirits from our atmosphere. In Philippians 3. You're to be the ruler of your atmosphere. Philippians 3, verse 2. We have another beware. Beware, beware of the music you listen to. Amen. Beware of the movies you watch. Beware of the, the books you read. Beware of the people you associate with. Beware. Bad company corrupts what? Good habits. Philippians 3, 2, beware of dogs. Now, the word dog in the Bible means demon-possessed individual. It doesn't mean barking ones, although they bark anyways. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. <laughs> Circumcised the eighth day of a stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained all of this or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on. I maintain that pressing on, that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things or which are behind and reaching toward the things which are Ahead, I press forward toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this thought pattern. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the what? Same mind. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. Praise God. So we got to be aware. We got to be alert. We got to be consistent. Holding on to Christ. Pressing through the world. Forgetting your past. Reaching for the completion of total freedom Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. Psalm 37. And we'll close here. Remember, there's a difference between management and freedom. Amen? Amen. People are still managing their demons. We want to be free. Bondage comes in many forms. In verse 1, do not what? Fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. 
for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Hallelujah, I can't wait. <clears throat> Verse 3. <laughs> Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his what? His faithfulness. Feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he's, he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall what? Bring it to pass. Well, it sounds like a pathway of death to yourself. Freedom. Look at The more dead you are, the freer you are. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. In other words, endure. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Don't be jealous of people who prosper. Amen? God's got a plan for you. Because of a man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. Praise God. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Now, the wicked plots against you and gnashes at you with their teeth. The Lord laughs at them, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy, to slay those who are upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own hearts, <coughs> and their bows shall be what? Broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. We need to trust. We need to dwell. We need to feed. Amen? Trust, dwell, feed, delight. Trust, dwell, feed, delight, commit. Commit is associated with submit. Rest in the Lord. We need to trust in the Lord, dwell in the Lord, feed, get fed from the Lord, delight ourselves in the Lord, commit and submit to the Lord, rest in the Lord. But there's two things we need to cease and forsake. That's called anger and wrath. So that you and I can continue in the regeneration of your freedom till we reach the third level. And once you've touched the third level, you've got to maintain it. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed for your shaking and quaking that you're doing and getting ready to do even more. Help us to continue to self-examine ourselves and let us see the meter of level of freedom that we're in. We want to reach total freedom in every area of our life so that we may be free to be led by your spirit and not overwhelmed and influenced by the world. In Jesus' name. <laughs>